Good morning, everybody. This is Erin with the Center for Protected Area Management. Or actually, good afternoon and good evening to some as well. It's morning in uh, Fort Collins, Colorado, 7 a.m. Uh, it's so good to see everyone here. Thanks for connecting. Yes. Um, I'm just briefly going to introduce uh, how this webinar is going to run. Just for the sake so that everyone can hear us during the presentation, this will be an informational presentation. We're putting all participants on mute, so if you could keep your microphones on mute, that would be great. At the end, we'll give you an opportunity to ask questions, and then you'll be able to use your microphone to talk with us. Uh, meanwhile, while we're presenting, if you have any questions come up, you, you could write the questions in the chat box, which you should see on your, your GoToMeeting control panel screen. It says chat. You can just write any questions. We'll be tracking those and we'll be answering your questions at the end of the presentation. And if you can't hear us or you can't see the screen, please also write in the chat and we'll um, try to resolve those issues. Uh, we have a PowerPoint presentation and you should be seeing this, the slide that says mechanics of the webinar. And we are also recording this webinar so that we can share it with our colleagues that weren't able to connect with us today. So we'll send an email with a link and everyone can rewatch this uh, to see the presentation. This is just a brief overview of the agenda. We're gonna introduce our team very quickly. I'll go over the philosophy of the seminar, what you should expect during the seminar, go over any last minute logistics, and then answer your questions. So like I said, I'm Erin, I'm the logistics uh, coordinator here and the training coordinator for the Center for Protected Area Management and welcome to all. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Ryan Fincham. Uh, I'm there on the uh, left side of your screen, uh, one of the two co-directors of our Center for Protected Area Management. Let me just say it's a real pleasure to welcome you all here to the webinar today, and uh, we're really uh, looking forward to seeing you uh, next week here in Colorado and uh, being able to take you throughout the Western United States to visit uh, many different protected areas and tourism um, uh, um, opportunities that exist throughout the national parks and, and really open up a, a wonderful dialogue and conversation with you all about what's working and what's not working around the world as we look to try to connect a greater number of the population to our to our amazing natural places. So I'll pass the, the uh, word uh, to Jim who can also introduce himself who's joining us remotely this morning. Good morning, everyone. This is Jim Barbrack. As Ryan mentioned, I'm the other co-director of the center and of the uh, seminar. It's a pleasure to welcome you all. I uh, look forward to seeing you all in just about a week. Hope you have good travels and we'll have a chance to introduce ourselves more fully and uh, to have a lively debate. And hopefully it'll be a, a wonderful and learning experience for all of us uh, over a 17 day period as we travel uh, nearly 3000 kilometers through four US states. We also have uh, Dr. Steve McCool, who's not uh, with us on the phone today, but will be joining us for the last um, eight days of the seminar when we're visiting Yellowstone National Park and Grand Teton National Park. And Dr. McCool, in addition to joining us as uh, instructor and participant in that, that last period of time, also serves as an ongoing senior advisor to the seminar, uh, helped us design the seminar, and uh, is, although retired uh, partially, uh, provides us with lots of information and ideas that we incorporate into the seminar um, each year.
So let, let's perhaps just start in largely you're going to see this is a logistical oriented sem, uh, webinar. We really want to make sure that we have a time to just engage with you all ahead of arriving here in, in, in the United States, uh, answering some of your very specific questions and providing you uh, responses to some of the, the questions we most commonly get from year to year. Um, as you see, this is the sixth year that we've been offering this seminar uh, collectively with uh, U.S. Forest Service International Programs Office. Many of you are sponsored by the U.S. Forest Service, and the U.S. Forest Service is a long-term partner of ours in this seminar as well as uh, a Spanish language seminar that we give every year in July. Uh, in addition, the Forest Service also offers uh, eight other seminars that many of you also may be familiar with. So the Forest Service is a really key partner of ours. And we thought at the beginning it's just important to mention the difference between seminar versus course, because we do give a lot of courses as well, which tend to be a little more traditional in their learning approach. But seminar is something that uh, we've developed along with uh, the Forest Service for these international technical visits, you could also call them, where we bring people together from around the world. And instead of sitting in the classroom and, and um, you know, focusing on unide unidirectional learning or even group exercises and things like that in the classroom, what we really try to do with the seminar is get out into the field, seeing different um, ideas of, of what's working and what's not working. Um, in the national parks that are going to be along the, the seminar route, meeting people along the way, and really using that as a starting point to reflect upon uh, what works and what doesn't work and um, incorporate not only what we're seeing in the context of the U.S., but also incorporate what we're seeing in the context of the 20 different additional countries that will be represented by all of you throughout the seminar. And that's really where the richness of a seminar like this comes together. It's, it's having perhaps a few baseline um, lectures at the beginning, um, ongoing site visits, and this constant dialogue uh, about what's working and not working around the world. Uh, we're all after the same goals, which is achieving biodiversity conservation across the landscape while also um, em empowering visitation so we can have um, uh, the broader public more engaged, more aware, and supportive of those conservation measures that we also hope and uh, need to make sure um, benefit the livelihoods of local communities that are living in and around those protected areas and natural spaces. So um, that's kind of the concept of the seminar versus the idea of a course. We will, of course, at the beginning of the seminar, have a few lectures. Um, there's a few key topics that will be coming up again and again throughout the seminar. And so we'll have a few brief lectures at the beginning just to kind of orient ourselves around those topics. Um, those will be a kind of a point of departure. Um, at the beginning, we'll also have the presentations, the individual presentations by each of you, which also help us understand uh, where you all are coming from and what you are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. And in just a minute, we'll go over a little more detail uh, what we're looking for in uh, those presentations that you all will be giving. We'll use site visits, as I mentioned, to compare and contrast. I think one of the important things to mention um, with the seminar is we're not um, bringing you all to the United States to say that the U.S. example is the example that we all should be following. That's not the case, and that never will be the case. Um, we have many successes. We also have many failures. And the idea really is to um, come to the U.S. where we're all kind of operating on neutral ground, away from our day-to-day, -day, away from our home country, distractions, uh, challenges that we face on a day-to-day -day basis, and, and, and take a fresh new perspective, see what we can learn from the U.S. system that might be applicable or adaptable, learn from each other what might be applicable and adaptable, but also learn from, from what we're seeing uh, from each other and in the field about what's not working and what we would do differently. And uh, it's, it's really um, this, an opportunity for horizontal learning where we can all share and connect with each other. And uh, our center, uh, we learn so much every year from each of you and want to make sure that from the beginning we all understand that um, this is not uh, a seminar of teachers or instructors and learners, but this is a seminar where we are all present as 
both. We're all going to be sharing our information and we're all going to be learning from each other. So this just shows you some of the places that we'll be visiting, some of the site visits. Uh, those vans you see there will be our home for the next 17 days once you arrive. We'll be spending lots of time, as Jim mentioned, covering uh, approximately 3,000 kilometers as we visit four different states and travel through almost 20 different protected areas. Some of those protected areas we'll be spending several days in, and in other cases we'll just be passing through. But it's, a, it's an incredibly aggressive agenda, but uh, we want to make the most out of your time here. One of the additional, although we don't mention them as part of our team, um, but, but, but people that make up uh, an important part of the seminar experience are all the different agency and community staff that we might be meeting along the way. Uh, as I mentioned, we won't be spending time with agency staff in all the protected areas, as sometimes we're just driving through. But in those, in those protected areas where we are spending considerable time, we will be meeting with park directors, park interpreters, uh, resource managers, and some of the community staff that um, are associated with those areas that uh, will share with us uh, uh, what's working for them, what's unique about that place, and we'll have lots of opportunities to have uh, conversations with them. Um, we'll also be meeting with uh, concessionaires, um, uh, concessionaires that are specifically working with uh, some of our protected areas and learn about how, how that um, their business operates within the protected area, what the role of those businesses are in comparison with, with, the, with the resource management agencies. And so um, there'll be several dozen people that we'll be meeting along the way that essentially form part of the instructor team informally of the seminar because they're not part of our staff, but yet we'll be providing uh, really important and vital information um, as, we, as we travel across the landscape. Just some examples of, of some of the uh, some of the uh, folks we might be meeting out in the field, uh, having conversations and discussions, and and uh, and, uh, and meeting our colleagues. We also want to make sure that that uh, we we spend formal time, but also that you all look for informal time for lots of reflection and discussion. And uh, we do have programmed uh, time in where we can sit together and talk about what we're seeing. Uh, please notice here for those that were asking pre-seminar about the, the weather conditions, sometimes the weather does vary. People are bundled up there on an early morning conversation. Um, so, but we will find time, whether indoors or outdoors, to sit together as a, as a group and talk about what we've seen, reflect on, 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 uh, on where we've been. But we also want you to find individual time to, 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 to figure out what this all means, to think about how what we're seeing relates to your day-to-day -day job, and uh, look for that inspiration that can help keep you going and keep you motivated. Um, we definitely know that working in the field of, of conservation and, and visitation to, to protected areas uh, sometimes can be very challenging. It can be challenging in terms of our budgets. It can be challenging in terms of our human resources. Um, it can be challenging in terms of finding the public support for the work that we're doing. So um, use this opportunity to find inspiration, to, to, to find that motivation, and recharge our batteries uh, as, we, as we look for uh, uh, what's coming down in the year ahead or the next few years ahead. And finally, uh, as a way to more formally help us take and capture those reflections, to capture what we've seen and what we've experienced and what motivates us to get work done, uh, we're going to ask at the end of the seminar, on the last day of the seminar, we have a, a, a large period of time set aside to allow you all to prepare an action plan, an individual action plan. Um, if there's multiple people coming from the same country, working together on an action plan would also be feasible. But the idea really is, is, is having something solid, something concrete written down that you can take back with you to implement um, uh, after participating in this seminar. We do this for a number of reasons. One uh, of the main reasons being that um, we're looking uh, as capacity building as something that's more than just um, accumulating information, ideas, and knowledge, but we're looking at it as something that actually leads to action on the ground. 
something that we do differently because we participated in this seminar. And um, so this action plan really allows us to, to, while we're here at the seminar, while you're still here experiencing um, this flood of information and ideas and inspiration, to capture those ideas on paper and then go back with this idea that you can put into practice. We also do this because a lot of the people that fund this seminar, the donors, they want to see something that, that materializes out of the seminar. They're happy that, uh, that we're all participating and engaging in this knowledge generation, but they would also like to see that knowledge generation lead to action on the ground. And this action plan helps us do that. And just finally, um, we also know that after being gone for 17 days on the seminar and returning back to your, to your jobs, there's going to be lots of things going on when you first get back. And, and sometimes we have to put on pause uh, new ideas that we had in the seminar to just basically catch up with those of us that are, 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 are on the job and with our families back at home. And so the action plan also serves as a reminder for once we get through that initial return, that flurry of activity that takes place when we re-engage and re-enter re into our normal jobs and daily lives to, um, to recall what it is that we wanted to do, that inspiration that, that came about through the seminar. So the action plan really serves multiple purposes. And uh, we'll be working on that um, at the end of the seminar, and you'll have that to take back with you. As you can see, there's uh, going to be plenty of opportunity for us to find inspiration and motivation um, as we travel through the seminar and see spectacular landscapes such as this at the Grand Teton National Park. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about logistics, just to make sure that everyone is prepared for their trip to the U.S. Um, I know I've sent a couple emails that are very long, and we really appreciate you reading through all of the information, including the travel logistics letter that I sent you. That will have, that should answer any question about arriving at the airport or uh, visas. Um, Originally, it, it stated about uh, travel uh, dates, etc. So please, if you have any questions, refer to that letter and all the emails that I've sent you previously, and then feel free to write me. Um, this course is very intensive. There's very few opportunities to have free time. We really want you to take advantage of your time here. And so you're again. So it's. Um, important to know that you won't be on your phones communicating with loved ones during class time. We highly encourage you to communicate during breaks or during the evening. That's when you should expect to be able to communicate with your loved ones. Most hotels will have internet and we will be sure that you get the Wi-Fi passwords at each hotel so that you can connect. Uh, depending on the applications that you use in your country, WhatsApp, and Skype tend to work really well, but you may have other applications depending on which country you come from. And we'll be staying in hotels through the, the entire duration of this seminar. Uh, each person will have a roommate and that will be the same roommate throughout. Uh, if there are any issues during uh, your stay while uh, sharing a room with a roommate, uh, we encourage you to work that out with your roommate. But if you have any challenges, feel free to approach us and we'll help mitigate any situations. But usually we try to connect people based on the country they come from, the general region, the age and language when possible. And then like Ryan mentioned, you'll have time at the end of the seminar to develop an action plan. Sometimes we get lost in the seminar and the participants have to help us find the way back. No, that's just <laughs> just kidding. That's just a joke. But um, as you can see, this just demonstrates um, uh, really the way the lots of the seminar will be happening, where every day we'll be out and about uh, visiting different areas, like we mentioned, four different states and uh, 20 different protected areas. So uh, come ready to travel, come ready to, to packed in a way that, um, that that you can easily get in and out of hotels. Um, we have every, every year we learn something and we, we, we apply something new to the seminar. And one of the things that we learned early on was we were changing hotels so frequently that people really were getting exhausted from packing and unpacking their bags every day. And so we, we still will be changing hotels quite frequently, but we've now arranged the seminar. So we're, so we're changing hotels the least amount of times possible. Um, 
obviously if we want to go across the landscape and see these different areas we do have to still change but I just just to let you know that that's one um, improvement we've made over the years so now I believe you'll be staying in seven different hotels uh, throughout your stay here versus 11 different hotels at the beginning and so we've really uh, uh, helped that out a lot but at the same time be prepared and as you think about how you're going to pack your bags and how you're going to come prepared that we will be changing fairly frequently hotels and so have a having a system in place so you can pack and unpack easily will help you out and to go over more of what to pack uh, like Ryan mentioned, you have to think about being on the move, traveling for 17 days, and you will have an opportunity to wash your clothes. We will give you a list of all hotels that have laundromats. Um, we will bring some soap, some laundry detergent with us, and then you'll be expected to, to uh, use coins to operate the machines. And so you don't need to bring a pair of clothes for every day. Um, we really want you to consider space when packing uh, because we will have one van dedicated to luggage and that is luggage for 32 people. So please uh, keep your luggage down to the minimum possible, one bag per person, one large bag, and then you could bring a small backpack as a day pack to carry with you. That would be our recommendation. At the same time, we do understand that uh, you're going to be traveling for a long period of time and that we're also going to be asking you to bring some warmer clothes if you have them because the weather will be variable. So we do understand it's, it's, it's a bit of a challenge that we're asking for, this balance of, of packing the minimum while also packing enough. Um, and, um, you know, we'll be flexible and work with you uh, for sure. Yes. And... You'll be here in the western part of the U.S. during the start of fall, and the temperatures could be quite variable. What we recommend is to bring different layers so that you could adjust your clothing based on the temperatures. In Colorado especially, the temperatures, even in the summer, tend to be very variable. So in the morning, it could start very warm, and then get cooled down. We could have hail in the evening. Um, we, we've even had snow on this seminar. Um, so bringing, uh, it, pants and then, for example, I like to bring a t-shirt and then I'll put on a long sleeve over if I get colder and then I'll put a fleece over that if it gets even colder and then a jacket and then I could peel those layers off as the temperature changes. Hats, gloves are also, uh, very useful during this trip and if you don't have those, we will have some to lend out during the seminar. We could also experience quite a bit of rain, wet weather. So a raincoat would uh, help, especially if it snows towards the end of the seminar. We had, a, we had an interesting experience last year, as you all know, uh, with climate change, it's hard to predict sometimes weather patterns these days as things are, are, are changing quite rapidly. But we had uh, a, a challenging and wonderful experience at the same time last year as the last week of the seminar, we had an incredible snowstorm that actually forced us to reroute a whole part of the seminar to go around the mountains that we could no longer get through. But it also meant that about 15 of our participants who had never experienced snow before had the opportunity to make snow angels and have a huge snowball fight and build snowmen and snow women and uh, <laughs> have, have an amazing experience. But that also meant that all of a sudden people from the equator regions of Asia, Africa, and Latin America were also experiencing below zero Celsius temperatures in the morning. So that's a bit unusual. That was the first time we had that extreme of a weather situation in the seminar. But uh, just to give you all the heads up that, that things can happen, weather can change, we do expect, generally speaking, for it to be cool in the evening, uh, cool in the morning, to warm up and be quite warm throughout the day. And that, that pattern should continue throughout the seminar with a slightly higher percent, percentage of, uh, of us having cooler temperatures throughout the, the day uh, towards the end of the seminar as we're in the Yellowstone and Grand Teton area. 
but uh, come prepared and just let us know when you get here. If you need hats and gloves, uh, we have those that we can lend to you all, and uh, we have a sign-out sheet that we can sign those out before we leave Fort Collins, which is the city in Colorado where we will initially base the seminar out of before we start the, the field visits around, around the different states. Perfect. And we highly recommend that you bring comfortable walking shoes or hiking boots. We won't be going on long hikes, but we will be going on hikes. And those trails, if it has rained or if we've had any weather, can be muddy. Um, so comfortable, sturdy shoes that you could go on trails with uneven ground and potentially some rocks would uh, be very beneficial for those activities. And we're very a very casual country, so during class and during the entire seminar, you can wear comfortable clothes. No need to dress up. There are two opportunities if you want to bring formal dress or your native dress from your country or a uniform. We will have a reception at the beginning of the seminar where you'll have the opportunity to meet some members of the community here at Fort Collins, the conservation and development community. And at the end, we will have a closing ceremony. It's not necessary. You do not have to dress up at these events, but if you would like to, those will be your opportunities to wear your formal dress or uniform. And then be sure to bring all your personal toiletries and medicines that you need for the entire seminar. Uh, it is In this country, you're unable to get medis uh, prescribed medicine without a prescription from a doctor. So it would be very difficult for you to be able to refill a prescription here. You would have to visit a US doctor that's very expensive. So please bring any uh, prescri prescription medication with you to last the entire seminar. And you have a packing list that's part of the travel logistics letter. So please revise that or review that and you'll, it gives you an idea of everything that you should bring to enjoy, have a positive learning experience here. And you will have um, emergency medical insurance. Um, we'll provide you with the details of that when you arrive. But I think the key thing to mention is that it's emergency medical insurance. Essentially, it's here to help you if you have an emergency. It doesn't cover you for um, you know, your general doctor visits. And it also has a, a, a co-payment. So each time you go to the doctor, that's how our medical system works in the United States. Um, of a, 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 that you have to actually make a co-payment to what your insurance pays. And those co-payments can add up uh, quite quickly. And so um, we're hoping nobody has the need to go to the doctor, but we have that insurance in place if you need to go. Um, just just for everybody uh, to, to know that, that usually there's about a $100 uh, U.S. copay each time you go visit a doctor uh, here in the United States. So hopefully we'll only need to be used in cases of emergency. I'll talk briefly about airline, airline baggage restrictions and customs and immigration to the U.S. This is just an idea uh, for a general idea for some of the airlines. I highly encourage you to check your own airline. Sometimes these uh, guidelines change depending on the country that you're coming from for each airline. Uh, but essentially, uh, it's very it's costly to bring overweight or oversized luggage. It could be up to a hundred dollar charge for overweight luggage and up to one hundred fifty dollar charge for oversized luggage on United American and Delta. Uh, so pack wisely, weigh your bags, check your airline's website, and make sure that you are bringing luggage that fits their own luggage policies. I know some people are waiting on their final itineraries and I uh, should be expecting those in my email, in my, in my inbox today, and I will send those so that you could check which airline you will be on. And I know I've been in communication with everybody uh, regarding certain tasks that need to be finished uh, right, essentially right now uh, before you travel to the US. And this is not to point out anybody, but it's important that we get these right away. And so I just want to make sure that everyone's aware of the status of certain logistical items. Uh, for visas, Beatrice, Marnet, and Angela, I know that you guys have appointments and they're a little later this month, but once you get your visa, please send me the visa copies so that 
we can be on your flights and make sure that you're able to arrive to the seminar. Uh, for flights, Sikshaya, and I hope I say everyone's name correctly. I, I look forward to learning how to pronounce some of your names, so please bear with me. I, I need your itinerary. I sent you an email and I hope to hear from you. And then uh, we have two different Olgas. I just abbreviated the last name, uh, but Olga uh, Kirkova, if you could send me your itinerary preferences, uh, then we'll be able to help you organize that flight. Uh, sorry, I just noticed I left something in Spanish. I copied something from our previous uh, uh, webinar uh, presentation for our Spanish course. But the diagnostic forms that were sent a couple weeks ago, they were due last week, and we have quite a few out. This helps us finalize our logistics, especially in regards to food uh, and dietary restrictions. I know we ask that in the application, but sometimes people don't share all of their dietary restrictions. So this is just to confirm the dietary restrictions that you have so that we can make the appropriate logistical arrangements with the food along the seminar ahead of time. In addition, it helps us understand more about your professional background and how we could best cater this seminar to your professional needs. So Marina, Gloria, Veronica, Katinka, Beatrice, John, Carolina, Elena, Olga, Kirakowski, and Oliver, if you could send your diagnostics right away, that would be much appreciated. My email's at the bottom of the screen. And then I created a Facebook page and we'll be adding everyone that I have found on Facebook today. This is a way for you guys to keep in touch with each other after this, the seminar. It's also a way for us to share information before you arrive. And so I have not found Facebook pages for Douglas, Gloria, Alyssa, Beatrice, Sikshaya, Olga Kaviko, and Cassiet. Um, it's okay if you don't have a Facebook, just email me and let me know if you don't have one. But if you do have one, please send the link to your Facebook page. Sometimes there are people, many people in the world with the same name, so it's hard to uh, distinguish who's who. And, and like Aaron said, if you don't use Facebook and are not planning to use Facebook, obviously that's not a requirement for the seminar. We just like if people are on Facebook to be able to co collect, connect them with our larger network um, so that you can not only collect, connect with people that are going to be on the seminar this year, but people from around the world that have taken the seminar in the past and just being able to dialogue and exchange information with the larger uh, network that we've created through the Center for Protected Area Management. Yes, thank you, Ryan. And then WhatsApp is another application that we use to communicate with the group before you arrive and during the seminar. Uh, this is especially useful when you're coming into Denver Airport and if your flight is delayed, you could send us a message and we will know to adjust our pickup times if your flight is delayed. Um, if you don't have WhatsApp, that's okay. Um, if you have a smartphone and you're able to download it, that might be helpful. Uh, I have checked the WhatsApp numbers that were left in your application, and I just want to verify WhatsApp numbers with Marina, Tia, or Tea, Sikshaya, Olga, and Olivier. And this is one of those ones that if you do have a smartphone, we would highly encourage you to download the WhatsApp application and uh, set up an account before coming to the seminar, even if you don't use it already. We think you'll find it very useful for the seminar to get updates and information. And unlike Facebook, WhatsApp does not require you to set up a public profile or share information about yourself. And um, you're able to sign up for WhatsApp. And then after the seminar, if you no longer want to continue using it, you can just delete your account. Um, but this is a very helpful way for us to be able to communicate with the group um, about last minute changes, um, if we're going to depart earlier or later. Um, it's just really helpful to be able to get communication out to the whole group uh, by sending one message through WhatsApp. And we will be forming a WhatsApp group about two days before everyone departs. And so that will create that opportunity for you to communicate with us during your travels. And if you do not end up having WhatsApp, then you get, we will leave our phone numbers and you'll be able to reach us through phone, email, and if you have Facebook, Facebook.
So <clears throat> as I mentioned before, um, at the beginning of the seminar, to really help us understand um, the collective experience that you all bring to the table, um, the issues and in, in some of the the, the, the things that you are working on in your jobs, we like to have uh, these beginning participant presentations. <clears throat> we'll be organizing you all into, into country or regional groups um, so that we, we have small blocks of people that are presenting. Um, after each of those small blocks of people presenting, then we'll have short breakout group discussions where we'll be able to go a little more in depth um, in, uh, and participate in a way that allows people to, to dive deeper and ask questions of our colleagues. Um, each person will have a maximum of 10 minutes. That's a very short period of time. Uh, we understand that's a short period of time, and in most cases, people would prefer to have more time. But over the years, we've tried different things. We've tried 10 minutes, we've tried 12 minutes, we've tried eight minutes, and we found that um, this 10 minute period of time tends to work pretty well, even though it's not um, the full time that most people would like. Um, 10 minutes goes by very fast, and so it's really important to keep, um, to keep your presentation very short and um, specific to the, um, to the layout that um, Aaron sent to you mm -hmm. in the uh, PowerPoint format. We will be very strict with time. Uh, we're going to be strict uh, not to be disrespectful to people, but actually to be respectful to people. Um, we found in the past if we're not really strict with time and, and, and really um, helping people to finish uh, right within their 10 minutes, then we have some people that may go on and talk for 10 or 20 or 30 minutes while others are being very good with their time and, and sticking to their 10 minute time slot. And so that we ensure that everybody gets 10 minutes, we will have a timekeeper and we'll track those 10 minutes and we'll let you know when it's time to finish up uh, and, and, uh, and move on to the next speaker. Um, one thing that I think is very key, because when we get together, um, one of the things that we all love to talk about and share with each other is um, the biodiversity of our, of our country, the unique cultural sites that we have, uh, beautiful pictures of our landscapes. And of course, we want to hear about all of those things throughout the seminar. But um, try not to make that the sole focus or the primary focus of this presentation. You can obviously include some of those photos as you're talking about your places, but what we really wanna know in this presentation, where we'd really like you to focus, is, is to focus on sharing what you do, your job, what is your job, what are the challenges that you face in your job, and what are the opportunities that you see on the horizon in your job for trying new things. That is the, the core of what's going to help us share and learn from each other most. Obviously, all the beautiful pictures and, and knowing about biodiversity is interesting, but what we really want to know is about you and your role in protecting the biodiversity and in connecting people through visitation uh, to these spectacular places. So if you could please focus on what you do, your challenges and your opportunities, that will really help us uh, a lot start off the seminar uh, by getting to know uh, what everybody does. Um, you can obviously share some photos. This is meant to really be a conversation starter. Don't think of this 10 minutes as your your one 10 minutes in the, in, the, in, the, in the seminar to share everything about what you do and who you are. So that's not really the purpose. It's to get us going. It's to get us started so that when we're in the vans driving 3,000 kilometers all over the western United States, we know who to seek out, who to sit next to to talk more about what they do and, and to learn more about their protected area and learn more about this challenge or opportunity. So let's keep it short, please. Please really focus in on those 10 minutes, keeping it as short and succinct as possible. And uh, I, I think that'll really help us uh, along the way. Come prepared right out, right when you get here for these presentations. Friday, September 7th and part of Saturday, September 8th are when we're going to have uh, all of these presentations here uh, in Fort Collins, Colorado, before we depart for the field visit. So please come prepared to give those presentations. Keep them short. Uh, and really focus in on, on what you do, your job, your challenges, and your opportunities. And so before you leave for your trips, I'll be sending you one final email. 
and that will have the airport pickup document, which will be a document that will break up arrival groups, arrival or will break up people into arrival groups. And each one of the seminars staff will come and pick you up. That'll be indicated who you'll be looking for. It'll have our phone numbers. It'll have a map of the airport to explain where we'll have a meeting point and where to meet up. And if, when I send that out, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us and we'll make sure that it's clear, but it usually is clear. We've never lost anyone at the airport and we will definitely wait until you get there. Uh, and if you're running late, you just can communicate with us and we'll shift the groups to adjust for arrival times as they change. And one of the, one of the important things about having this arrival document is that you'll see all the arrivals all together in this one document. And so, for example, if you don't have WhatsApp and you're unable to communicate with us uh, and you're going to end up arriving much later than you expected, what you can look for is, well, when is the next pickup group? So maybe I'm going to arrive two hours later than my pickup group, but I noticed that a few hours later, there's a second pickup group. You can go and meet that pickup uh, group at the, at the arrival point and look for the, the driver that's going to be taking that next group. So it really helps you organize and plan and prepare in case for some reason you have a missed flight or lost baggage or have some other issue that arises. Of course, we hope that you will communicate with us uh, along the way so that we know what's going on. But just think of that as a backup plan of, of being able to know uh, when the next group is. Because what we don't want you to do, and this was very explicit in the in the detailed uh, letter of acceptance, is we don't want you taking a taxi uh, from the airport if you miss uh, if you miss your pickup group, because taxis are going to be very very expensive. Even even using um, Uber uh, is very very expensive uh, to get to Fort Collins. Um, we do have information about. Um, how to catch a shuttle bus yes, in your in detailed logistics letter. Uh, logistics letter as well. That shouldn't be necessary, but um, uh, the, the key is just to, to maintain communication with us throughout and use these uh, accompanying documents to help you organize yourself and navigate the arrival process. And I believe everyone is arriving the 5th of September. But if someone is arriving earlier, then you would have to organize your own transportation. But for everyone that is arriving on that recommended day, the day before the start of the seminar, we will be at the airport to pick you up and welcome you to the U.S. and to Colorado. In addition, I'll be sending you the final agenda so that you can review the agenda and know what to expect from day to day. We have a participant profile document that we'll be sending out in the same email, and this will have a brief uh, biography of each person, including the instructor, so that you could start to get to know people on the plane before you arrive. And then there's a Colorado State University waiver, which is just a formality for the university in order to participate on this seminar, you have to sign the waiver. We are just giving it to you so that you review it, and we will have it printed out here when you arrive on the first day of the seminar so you could sign it. And this will be the last email uh, sent a week to a couple days before you travel. And we really appreciate you being here. We're really looking forward to getting to know everybody, learning from your experiences. Uh, we hope you have a safe, safe and smooth travel with no complications. Um, and we're here to answer any questions that you may have that we haven't answered during this seminar or during this webinar. We ask for your patience on, on, on arriving. I know sometimes travel can be long and tiresome. And um, as you probably all know from traveling regionally or internationally, uh, sometimes the uh, customs and immigration officers of our countries aren't the most welcoming individuals. So uh, thanks for your patience as you navigate your entry into the United States. Um, and uh, security at the airports can be fairly tight and sometimes uh, unpleasant. Um, but uh, just know you'll just be a short flight away to a very smiley and welcoming face in Colorado once you arrive at Denver International Airport. Um, if you have any other questions, please feel free to include them in the chat. Um, and um, 
we're basically at the end of the of the the basic overview and logistical piece that we wanted to cover uh, ahead of your arrival to the United States. Of course, once you arrive and we're all here together in Fort Collins, in the first few days of the seminar, we'll be going over a lot more details uh, about what to expect. We'll be going over in detail the agenda, showing you the map of the entire route where we're going to be going and um, uh, answering any additional questions. So really what we're looking for now are those final questions that you need to have or would like to have answered uh, prior to departing your home country for, uh, for the United States. And just real quickly, I noticed that some people shared some information about Facebook, WhatsApp, or their visas within the chat box. If you could also email me, Aaron, that information, that would be really helpful. Sometimes when I close out the webinar when we're done, it, the chat box does not always save, so I may lose that information. So just shoot me an email after the webinar with the information that you included in the chat box, or if you got your visa or you have your Facebook page, WhatsApp, or whatever additional information you owe me. Any remaining questions or comments? Ryan, can I say something? Sure. Of course. There are three of you. Can you hear me now? I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Because it sh shows it's on mute. Okay. Um, there are three of you whose name who are participating, but your names are not showing up. It just shows as if you look in the in the list of the 15 people, it says waiting for name. So you didn't put your name in. So just so we can keep track of who actually was participating, uh, if you go to where it shows the the like the head and torso uh, icon and see if your name is not listed, if you can uh, uh, shoot us a message so that we know that you actually were participating. Uh, because everyone else who was not participating, we're going to be sending them a message and sending them a link to the webinar so that they can watch it later. We just wanted to try to keep track of who was actually listening in. Thank you, Jim. Yep, thank you. And so if you can let us know who you are, there's uh, at least four people there that, uh, that whose names don't show. So just met mentioning your name in the box, in the chat box there will help us be sure we know who, who was here. Um, um, if there's no other further questions, um, we'll just uh, make note as you uh, add in. There's one um, question here. Okay. Hey, Toga, I see you have a question uh, about the CSU waiver. Yes, and I could definitely repeat that. Uh, this is just a, a, a standard waiver in the U.S. We're really uh, careful with liability. If anything happens on this seminar, the university doesn't want to be responsible. And we will send that waiver to you so that you could review it. But it is something that you have to sign that essentially says that you will not uh, consider the university responsible for any any potential events that may happen or could happen during. Yeah, so basically uh, any time an individual participates in any activity that is considered risk, that has a risk associated with it, it's very uh, common in the United States for uh, the participant who is individually determining and deciding to participate in that activity to sign a form that basically says they are individually deciding to participate in this activity and they do not hold the entity that's organizing the activity responsible should something happen to them as an individual. So this happens with everything from uh, going, um, uh, go, going on a boat ride or going on a horseback riding trip or, um, you know, uh, on a wagon ride. I mean, almost, almost any activity in the United States that has a perceived level of risk um, requires that the individual determine that they're participating on their on, on their own behalf. Um, and this seminar does not have a lot of high risk activities. Um, probably the the highest risk act risk activity is driving in the vans around because uh, even though we we're driving in areas that are 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 fairly unpopulated and we have a very safe 
and a skilled set of drivers. Um, driving is probably the most risky thing we do, um, but um, that's something we all engage in every single day of our lives. And so um, this is, uh, there's not a lot of uh, high risk activities on this seminar like there are on some of our other activities where uh, we have a seminar in Spanish every July where we go whitewater rafting for four days. We have horses and llamas and it's a very much more intensive back country um, wilderness experience um, that has a lot higher level of risk. Um, the risk on this seminar is very low. But it's uh, regardless um, something that our university requires for any participant um, to sign saying that if something were to happen, they wouldn't hold the university liable for uh, that accident or that incident. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, once you receive that form, um, which Aaron will be sending this week, um, please let us know. You know email us if you have uh, any concerns with that. Um, and, and we can explain it in more detail. But just I think the important thing that Aaron mentioned is that um, the university will require you to sign that before allowing you to participate on the seminar. So if it's something you feel like you cannot sign, uh, then that's probably good to know before you arrive at the seminar. But uh, we've never had an issue in the past. People have signed it, um, but happy to help you understand that uh, in more detail if need be. And then Surya, I see your question about when to expect to receive the flight itinerary. Some of your donors have organized with us so that to charge us of purchasing the flights through the university uh, travel agent. And I have approved all itineraries. So I'm receiving final itinerary or I'm waiting final itineraries. I expect to get them today. I was hoping to get them actually on Friday and I did get some, I will forward those emails that are in my inbox. Once I have them, I promise I will send you your itinerary. Uh, so it, it should be today, if not uh, latest Tuesday morning. And I will communicate with you if, if for some reason there's a greater delay. And thank you so much for your patience in that process. It is because we're done with the university is just a little bit more slow moving. There's several different offices that have to get involved in order to request the itinerary, then that has to go to the travel agent. And then oftentimes we have to review the travel agent's um, itinerary because sometimes they don't give what we feel like is enough time for people to have the transition. For example, when you go through customs and immigration arriving in the United States, we wanna make sure you have plenty of time in case there's a long line and so that you won't miss your connecting flight. Um, and so it takes a little little bit longer, but just so you all know, we're in, for those that we are buying your tickets, we're in the final stages of getting all that ticket information finalized and booked, and we'll, we'll be in touch with you shortly with all that information. Yes. And for those that are just getting their visas this week, I can't make those purchases until I have your visas. So I've held off on those few that do not have their visa at the moment. For those that have just sent me their visas, I will make be starting those purchases today so that you will get your flight within the next couple days. And we will be sending a link with uh, the recording of this webinar to everyone. So even if you've participated and you wanna review the webinar again, I will send that link uh, later today or tomorrow at the latest. Any other questions? We really thank you for being a part of this webinar. Uh, we know you have busy schedules and are trying to wrap things up before leaving your country for a period of time. Uh, by all means, you know, if you have to go to a meeting or go back to your, uh, your work, we'll be wrapping up in just a minute if there aren't any other questions. Just one final thought um, to share with you all. I know um, uh, 17 days is a long time and actually it's even longer than that when you add in the travel days um, and so it's hard to be away from our jobs for that long uh, especially today in today's age um, it, it, whatever you're able to do as much as you're able to pass on to other colleagues and have other people focus on your work while we're on while you're on the seminar I would highly encourage you to do that the seminar is very intensive 
And uh, we've seen people over the years that try to keep working uh, their normal job while they're on the seminar. And while there's some people are able to do little bits in the evening and in the early, early morning, I do feel like personally it detracts a little bit from the learning opportunity when somebody has to stay engaged with their normal job. And so if you're able to disconnect from that job and really focus your attention on the seminar, pay attention to all of our colleagues from around the world that are coming together to share with us, really honing in and, and focusing on the site business and what we're seeing and, the, and spending more time thinking and reflecting about, about what it is that we're doing and where we're heading in this world and really using it as a time to, to disconnect from your day to day and, and fully immerse yourself in the experience of the seminar, I'd really highly encourage you to do so because um, uh, I think you'll get a lot more out of the seminar if you're, if you're able to do that. Um, so that's just my final parting uh, comments uh, because I, I think it's really important. Um, other than that, we wish you all the best of luck in, in your final week of preparations. Uh, I wish you all the best of luck to the last few that are that are finalizing up their visas. Um, don't hesitate to, to reach out. Let us know if anything, if you have any questions, final questions as you're as you're preparing to come. And we look forward to seeing you uh, uh, mid next week uh, here in Fort Collins, Colorado, and uh, really look forward to meeting you all and to sharing with you over the next uh, two and a half weeks. Thank you so much. Hope you have a good morning, afternoon, evening. And we'll see you soon. All right. We'll see you all soon. Safe travels.